Let's learn now how to use the mixing board in Logic Pro for iPad. We can access the mix view by tapping on the mix icon at the bottom of the screen. This will bring up our mix window where we can see all our inserted instruments, audio input, audio inserts, sands, groups, automation settings, pan, volume, and of course our mute and solo buttons. At the very bottom there is the name of the track. The mix view has really two main view settings. We have the mix view, this is the one engaged now, and we use the mix view to operate the mixing board, which means to move faders, move pans, and also to select any effect that we want to edit. So when I have the mix option engaged, it means that I'm operating the mixing board and I'm not adding or deleting any of the effects or uh, parameters that are currently displayed. The other tool that I have available in the mixing board is the setup tool that's identified by a plus icon. As you can see, when I'm in setup mode, I can add effects and I can also delete effects. So the setup allows me to change whatever effects or plugins I want in a certain channel. So for example, if I want to add another MIDI plugin on my current channel here, I'm going to tap the plus icon and I'm going to have access to all my different MIDI plugins. If I want to add an audio effect, I'm going to tap on the plus icon on the inserts and I have access to all my insert effects the logic ones, but also my audio units. So again, if I want to mix actively, I'm going to switch to mix view. If I want to change any settings on the mixing board, I'm going to switch to setup mode. Let's take a look at each individual option that I have for channel strips. Right from the top, I have my MIDI inserts. These are MIDI effects that can be only used on MIDI and software instrument tracks, not on audio tracks. As you can see on audio tracks they are not available, but they are available on MIDI tracks and software instrument tracks. These are a good choice of MIDI filters. They allow me for example to arpeggiate a certain part, I can trigger certain chords, I can modify MIDI data, I can modulate MIDI data. So there's some really, really good options there that simplify your MIDI handling, but they can also be used as a creative process, like for example, the arpeggiator or the modulator. So those are really, really exciting MIDI plugins that you should definitely explore. The next slot available is for either the software synthesizer inserted on a MIDI track. In this case, I have the RetroSynth, or for audio tracks is the input that's available. So if I want to change the input of an audio track, I will do it there. If I want to change the inserted software instruments for a MIDI track, I'm gonna do it right there. The next slot is for determining the output of each track. So if I tap on the output there, I can choose to output that specific track either to the main output or a bus. So it's very useful if you want to bus certain tracks to the same bus output. So I can create submixes, for example. Then I have access to all my inserts effects. We should be familiar by now what inserts do. Remember that when 
I use an effect as an insert, the entire signal of that channel goes through that effect. So for example, in this case here, I have a compressor, an overdrive, an ensemble effect, a phaser, and a stereo delay. Then I have access to my sends. Remember, when we use an effect as a sends, we basically share that effect among several tracks. So to add a send, I will simply tap on the send, and I can tap into an existing bus. In this case, I have bus one, we have a neon drive, bus two, a reverb one, bus three, reverb three, or I can create a new bus. In this case, it's bus four. And when I create a new bus, that bus shows up at the end of the mixing board right here. So if I want to add, let's say, delay on this track, I already assigned it to bus four. I'm gonna tap right here to select the effect. I wanna go to delay. I can take maybe a sample delay. And now, when I raise this send here, I'm going to send signal to my sample delay, and I will hear that delay on that specific track. So the AUG system is actually very simple in logic because, as I said, you're just going to create a new AUGS. Let's do it again. I'm going to switch to setup mode. I'm going to tap on the plus. I'm going to create a new bus. Now my bus 5 show up right here. And now I decide which effect to add on that bus. Let's say I'm going to add a reverb. And now by raising my bus 5, I'm going to send signal to my new reverb that I just created. After the auxiliary sends, I have the group option. This allows me to group several tracks together so that when I move a fader, all the faders associated with that group follow. This can be useful to create submixes or if I need to automate the mix for certain faders all together. We're going to take a look at it later. The next option is my automation option. Again, we're going to take a look at this in a separate video. And then I have my pan. To reset the pan, just double tap on it. I have my channel fader. Again, to reset it, double tap on it. My mute, solo, and the track name. When I tap on the track name, I can rename the track. I can copy the channel strip setting. I can switch all, all the effects and plugins. I can remove inactive plugins, remove all effect plugins, and remove all the sends. So it's a quick way to reset the channel strip or to copy and paste the channel strip. Now let's take a look at a simpler session here. So we can really dig in detail about each option when we start using the mixing board. In this case, I have a simple retrosynth patch, which I'm going to loop here so we can keep mixing it. I'm going to open up the mixing board. And right at the top, when I hit my setup, I have a MIDI effects option. This can be used to smooth out MIDI data, to smooth out velocities, but also it can be used in a creative way. So if I add an arpeggiator, for example, when I hear the track with the arpeggiator, the track is going to sound very differently. Let's hear it. I'm going to undo the arpeggiator and Here's how the track sounds without the MIDI effect. So very simple. Now I'm going to add at the top a MIDI effect arpeggiator. When I play it back, now I have a nice arpeggiated bass patch that is way more interesting than the previous one. Remember that if you want to edit that arpeggiator, switch back to mix mode and tap on the arpeggiator. And now I have all the parameters of that specific effect available here. I can change the rate.
can change the mode. So there are many parameters that you can play with, but you can see the effectiveness of using MIDI effects for a certain track. Now, in the mixing board, right after my MIDI effects, I have the current patch that I'm using. So in this case, it's a retro synth. Again, if I tap there, I'm going to gain access to the actual synthesizer and all its parameters. Right, so this is the current patch. So you can see how you can edit the parameters of that specific synthesizer. If I bring back my mixing board, the next step is the audio output. The audio output can be changed when you are in setup mode. And if I tap there, I'm going to see all my available output of my audio interface. In this case, I'm using the built-in one, so I only have one and two. And I can choose also to send that specific track to a different bus. Then I have my insert effects. So if I want to add, for example, a distortion effect, I'm just going to tap on the audio effects slot and I'm going to choose, in this case, a distortion. Again, if I want to edit the parameters of that specific effects, I'm going to switch back to mix and tap on the distortion slot. And here are my parameters. Let's add another insert. I'm going to tap on setup. I'm going to tap on the plus sign and I'm going to select phaser. So now I also have a phaser inserted on the same channel. And again, if I want to change the parameter of that phaser, I'm going to switch back to mix, tap on phaser, and here are all my parameters for the phaser. If I want to add a delay or a reverb, for example, I'm going to switch back to setup. And while I can insert those as insert effects, it's better to use them as send. So I'm going to just tap on plus send. I'm going to create a new bus. Let's create a new AUX channel right here. And on the AUX channel, I'm going to insert the effect that I want to use. Let's say a stereo delay. Now, if I want to add some stereo delay to my current channel, the only thing I need to do is to switch back to mix and use my send here to send some signal all the way to my stereo delay. And I can hear the delay applied to that specific track. It is a good idea every time you create a send to name it right away. So in this case, here's my send, aux1. If I tap and hold, I have the option to rename it, and I'm going to rename it Delay Bass. So that I know that that AUX track is for my delay for the bass. Now let's say that I want to add a second track that's going to be layered on this bass. So what I'm going to do is to tap the plus button to add a track. I want to add a MIDI track from an audio unit synthesizer. So I'm going to tap on the three dots here and I'm going to choose a synthesizer right here where it says patch instrument. I'm going to go to instruments. I'm going to go all the way down to my audio unit instrument and I'm going to pick maybe something from the Viking synth. I'm going to tap create. Now here's my Viking synth 
and to edit the specific parameters of the synthesizer I'm just going to tap on the Viking synth option here and I can browse the presets of this specific synthesizer by tapping on the drawer icon here and just browsing some of the patches so let's say I like this 80s bass now if I want to copy the same MIDI information from the previous track so that I layer the two tracks I'm going to just make sure that I select the region I'm going to tap on the duplicate icon and now I'm just going to simply tap hold and drag now the two parts are being played by both tracks Now I did this because I, I want to show you how to group tracks. So if I want to have these two channels grouped together so that when I move a fader they both move, I'm going to go back to my mixing board here. And where it says group, under the setup icon I'm going to tap there and I'm going to create a new group. And I'm going to call this group base. And here I can choose what this group is going to be used for. It can be used for editing, for record, for input, for color track. That's kind of up to you. I like to have them sharing the same color. Definitely the editing section. And so now I'm done for this track. I can see that track one belongs to the group called bass. Now the only thing I have to do is to tap on the track two and say assign that track also to group one base and I can see down here that they both belong to base one so what happens now is that when I move a fader they both move together now you can decide what moves together now to do so you're gonna tap on the three dots here of the group switch to automation and here's gonna tell you what that group is going to be able to control for all the tracks belonging to it. So I can also have the pan if I want, mute, solo, sans, or individual sans. So it's really cool because you can really decide granularly what each group controls for each channel. So now my two faders work together, and if I do a little bit of automation, I can just move one fader and the other one will follow. There are only a few items left on the channel strip that we need to learn more about. I'm going to talk about the automation in a separate video, but the pan is very easy to understand. I can move the track left or right, and again double tap to reset the channel. I can change the volume with the fader, double tap to reset it, and then I have my mute that mutes the track, or solo that solo that track. At the bottom, as I mentioned, if I tap on the name of the track, I have access to all these options that allow me to deal with the full channel strip. I can copy, paste it, I can reset it, or I can delete the channel altogether. So as you can see, the mix window in Logic Pro for iPad is really, really advanced. I can do pretty much anything I can do on Logic Pro for my Mac and it gives you a lot of freedom and a lot of creativity when it comes to mixing.